Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with a special request for my mother, Pauline. This is Great Grandma C's Pane di Grana Turco. If you got a food video blog and your mother requests a recipe, you do it. So uh, she was talking about some bread that her grandmother used to make her, my great-grandmother. It was a loaf of uh, Italian bread that had cornmeal in it. So I said, that sounds pretty easy, but she couldn't uh, find a recipe online. So she asked me to uh, figure it out, and I think I did. I think it came out pretty good. All right, so we're going to start with one package of dry yeast, and I forget how much that is. I think it's like a teaspoon and a half or a quarter or something like that. Anyway, use one package, just regular dry active yeast. So I'm going to put a pinch of sugar, about an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to put a half a cup of bread flour and a cup of tepid, lukewarm water. Okay, a lot of people kill their yeast with really hot water because they think it's going to go faster. Um, it won't go at all if you kill the yeast. So we're going to whisk that up, and that's just going to sit on the counter for about 40 minutes. All right, half hour to 40 minutes. And what's going to happen, it's going to kind of sponge up a little bit. And that really gets things going there. All right, then we're going to make the dough. So I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of salt. Now, my mom, usually for one big loaf of bread, puts a teaspoon of salt. That's up to you. I'm going to put two good-sized tablespoons of olive oil. And the reason I say good size is because the spoon I was using, I think, is a little bigger than a tablespoon. And that is a half a cup of cornmeal. And I don't like pieces of paper in my cornmeal. Take out any pieces of paper that may be in there. I don't know what that's from. And we're going to mix that together. Okay, so that's kind of the base of the dough here. Now, for this much water, a cup of water, I've already put in a half a cup of flour. I've already put in a half a cup of cornmeal. So that's one cup. So this is going to take approximately, approximately two more cups of flour. Bacon is not an exact science when you're doing bread because depending on the, the humidity and so forth, it really is going to uh, vary. So I dump a cup of flour in and mix it up, which gives me a really, really sticky dough. And then I'm going to put in about three quarters of a cup of flour. So uh, that could be enough for me. And I'm just going to kind of get it where it forms a, you know, a little stiffer dough. And then I'm just going to dump this on the work surface and start to knead it. So that excess flour, you might not need it, you might need it. You might have to add another, that other quarter cup. It all depends. See, right now it's still pretty sticky, and it's still uh, you know, grabbing that flour. But as you work it and as you knead it, you'll be able to feel if it needs more flour. And uh, I'm not going to bore you with a you know, 15 minutes of kneading, but uh, you want to knead it until it's very smooth and elastic. Okay, so right there, it's, uh, you know, it's starting to get elastic, but see when you poke it, it still holds the fingerprints. So I'm going to keep, I can feel this just as I'm kneading it. It's just not elastic yet. It's just, uh, you know, it's more like Play-Doh. It just doesn't have that nice elasticity. But you'll see here as I work it and I work it. And this took about 12 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. So now we're getting pretty close. It looks a lot smoother. All right, it looks, uh, it's, it's not going to be completely smooth because it does have cornmeal in it. So it, the surface is going to feel a little grainy to you, but that's okay. But here's what we're looking for. See, you poke it and it just kind of springs back at you. And that's all you need. You don't have to knead it any more than that, and uh, I'm going to stop poking it now. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in a bowl, maybe a teaspoon and a half, tablespoon. That's just to coat the outside of the uh, dough to keep it nice and, uh, you know, moist. You don't want the dough drying out or getting dry spots. This has to double in size. If you let this rise for two hours in a not cold place, it doesn't have to be a hot place. It doesn't even have to be like a super warm place. It just can't be a cold, breezy place. Now, I like to put a wet towel over my dough. I like a nice, humid, a nice, moist environment. So I'm going to put the towel over. I got a little rubber band I use to hold it on. And I'm just going to put it in my oven that I turned on for just like 30 seconds, and then I turned it off. That's just to take the chill out of the oven. I don't want the oven hot. All right, you don't want to bake the dough in the bowl here, so that, that won't be good. And that sat there for two hours, and two hours later... That's what I had. And there's very few things as beautiful to touch and look at as risen dough in a, in a kitchen. All right, so one reason you really should bake is just to feel something like that. And if you don't cook, you'll never feel that. Could you imagine going through life and never feeling that? That would be, that would be sad. All right, I'm going to kind of peel it out of the bowl. I'm just going to pat it down. That gets the big air bubbles out. So I want to make sure the stickier side is up. All right, so it's about 12, 14 inches long in a rectangle shape. And I'm just going to roll it up, finishing with the seam at the bottom. And that's just how you form a loaf of bread. Very, 
Very basic. Now what we're going to do, the next stage is called proofing. All right, proofing just means you're going to let this double in size. We're going to let it set for one hour, and that usually is plenty to make it double. You're going to put some cornmeal down in your baking sheet. So you want to use a nice heavy-duty pan. Ones that are too thin really uh, don't do a good job. The, the bottom of the bread usually starts to burn. Now we're going to let this double in size, and what my mom does, she just puts a dry towel over like this and lets it rise for an hour. All right, I'm going to take off my towel to reveal my doubled in size bread approximately. All right, now before this goes in the oven, we have to slice it. I'm going to take a razor or a very sharp knife and give it one vertical slash right down the middle, about a half inch deep, quarter inch to a half inch deep. And that's going to give it that kind of traditional Italian loaf look. You can slash across, I don't care. What I have is a preheated 425 degree oven with a pan of water in it. I always bake with a pan of water. That humidifies the oven and makes for a nicer crust. And I'm going to cook that for about 35 minutes until it's done. And the outside is kind of light brown and crusty. And it sounds hollow if you tap on it with a spoon. And I'm going to put it on a rack to cool. Always on a rack if you want the bottom crust to stay crusty. And there we are. Great Grandma C's Pane di Grana Turco. And that just means bread with cornmeal. Now once this is cooled, you want to let it cool. All right, don't slice the bread hot. Barely warms okay, but let it cool down. What I like to do with this bread, I like to slice it, which I think works great for bread. Then, what I like to serve with this is butter. And if you haven't tried that, it is a great combination. This is great with uh, something like a chili or a soup. So anyway, that was for you, Mom. I hope that comes out, and I hope you all give that a try. Go to the site to get the exact ingredients, and as always, enjoy. Enjoy.